next question or concern is here we're trying to move towards the building of a new society, a new world where we can coexist. We talk about tolerance. I'm trying to look at the issue of tolerance versus going beyond tolerance. Tolerance is like, you know, not changing but just bearing the patient. It's, it's like a, what they call like a, a conflict resolution method of confining the conflict. But it doesn't solve it, it doesn't uproot it. So as I wonder, because look at this typical example you gave just now. The Islam law will say that you mustn't give your female child out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's your rule. Nobody expects you to break that rule. Yeah. So, but yet that rule can create a conflict for other people around you. Yeah. Similar with the Christians. You talked about how the Christians came and they made their constitution that didn't embrace the indigenous. Yeah. Because their book said, don't be equally yoked with non-believers. So they were following their rule too. Mm -hmm. So it seems that when we follow these rules of ours, they tend, too strictly at least, they tend to create another base of keeping us from truly uniting. So the question is, where do we go next? You know, how do we advance to that next stage? Because we see now the result of keeping all these separate rules and keeping all this dif difference between us has brought us all to a failed state. We messed up, it's finished. So here we are getting up again now, trying to go forward, and we are asking, the TRC is asking the religious and traditional people, where do we go next now? We continue the same old way of just tolerating each other and not being influenced by the religion or is there something better that we can find? Learning from the experience of how this tolerance and, and not changing will only lead to future conflict again. So I don't know if you want to say anything on this issue, then I'm finished. Yeah, but for first tolerance is, you know, from my understanding of tolerance is that uh, tolerance is accepting others for what they are. So uh, let us accept, you know, uh, but it, it is not unique to Liberia. There are other countries that diverge, you know, I mean, diversify in terms of uh, people. You know, for instance, you, you know, you said not could accept. I, sorry, could I qualify something? You just, I just left something out. I'm very sorry. If yeah. you don't mind. Yeah. Please. You know, this issue about accepting others where they are. Yeah. For example, the new constitution, the second one that we made, yeah. it specified that we should focus on positive cultural elements, yeah. not negative. So, also, another point is this issue of religion. You talk about faith yeah. versus cultural norm. Yeah. Some people have faith in a God of evil yeah. as compared to some who have faith in a God of goodness. Yeah. Like Christianity, Islam, yeah. that's their faith in a God of goodness. Yeah. But there are some people who worship devil. Yeah. And so that's their religion. They believe in certain evil things where I have to kill and make human sacrifices right. to allow me to restore my power and to gain my position. So if you talk about just accepting each other, you can never resolve the problem. We have to find a way to go beyond that general acceptance of each other as we are and deal with the issue of good versus evil. So that, that's my last thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you see, uh, in, in looking at tolerance, you know, the, the best resolution for, you know, having a, a more tolerant society is the respect for the rule of law. People should respect one another. I respect, I respect you for what you are. So I cannot transgress certain boundaries. You know, that, that's it. My, look, this, this man's law says, his, his, his religion says that, look, uh, on, um, on Sunday he does not go to work. He, he goes to church, right? On Sunday. This guy's religion says, um... On Friday, uh, he goes to mosque. So if I'm working in a place, a Christian organization, it, you know, it, it is understood because if I'm filling in the form, I fill in the form as, you know, the actual religion. I say Muslim. So if it's on Friday, I ask you, oh boss, I want to go, I want to go prayer. So if you, you know, you, you have to tolerate me for that because I'm, I'm a Muslim and the, the society is a diverse society. So if we respect our constitutions and, and respect the rule of law, then we can have a more tolerant society. And no one, no one group of people should be above the law. Everybody is equal under the law. Once we respect those, you know, the examples are replete all around the world. The great United States of America, diverse people from different all around the world are there. But it's a harmonious society. Respect for the rule of law. I mean, Nigeria, the rule of law all around the world. That's it. So we must respect the rule of law in the country. Nobody should be above the law.
So if we, if, we, if we respect that, then there will be tolerance in the society. Respect me for who I am. I respect you for who you are. That's it. Okay, I mean, I won't push the point. I, yeah. you know, that's your view. I respect that. Thank yeah. you. I'm finished. Thank you very much for your presentations. I, uh, I don't have uh, many questions. However, I have some comments uh, I would like to share. As concerns uh, the two major religions in Liberia, From what we can see that has unfolded in our country over the last plus hundred years, yeah. and what we see before us today, it would appear to me that both Christianity and Islam in Liberia have displayed a large degree of contempt for traditional religion. For example, you have uh, what is referred to as the devil. That is an appellation of traditional religious beliefs aligning it with the devil. The devil coming or the devil outside. And those things take care on today. And when you see the devil, you connote the image of evil. And unfortunately, that is still with us today. From my understanding, traditional religion is rooted in the belief that the Almighty God manifests Himself through His creation. Yeah. And consequently, if you look at traditional societies, Nearly every traditional society, they have, what is common to all traditional societies is respect for the sanctity of life. Honesty, that if you leave your things outdoor, for example, you will come back the next day and see it there. And if you went into the interior of the country, in traditional villages, you see that. Respect for people, for the old, for women, and all of that. Respect too also for the balance in nature. That if you went to a tribe, for instance, that you will see that, if you look at, say, maybe the Loma people, you see that each has, each family has a taboo that in their system of belief, you cannot kill a bird. And that will refer to chicken. So the person who holds that taboo will not kill a bird, will not even kill a chicken. There may be somebody else who may hold a taboo as concerns uh, certain other animals. So if you put all together, you will see that A combination of all these taboos, in a way, promotes conservation of nature, respect. But in a way, we've seen that traditional religion has been under an assault by the established religions. Maybe you can throw some light and provide some insight as to why this attitude. We have Christian holidays. You have Muslims advocating for the official recognition of Islamic holidays, and yet there is no thought that traditional religion practiced by the majority of our people, there's no thought as to setting aside a particular day to commemorate traditional religion or traditional belief. So perhaps maybe I want to ask, why is there an assault on traditional religion? Why is such display of bigotry and contempt for traditional religion. 
And I must emphasize that religion and culture goes together. Religion is an offshoot of culture, as a matter of fact. So in saying so, I'm saying also that there is contempt for traditional culture and traditional religion by people holding beliefs in uh, in the so-called established religions. So why is this so? First, before we go into that. Yeah. Uh, before the coming of the the uh, the Western civilization, that is the Republic of Liberia, um, the the tribal people in this country were in small political units. They were settled in small political units, chieftain, um, you know, and then uh, they were practicing their cultural belief, traditional belief, you know separately and among them in fact the group as i say in my literature the group was not homogeneous you know it was a heterogeneous group maybe you found pele you found loma you found kisi you found or maybe uh Kran, you know living in one community but the the dom there's a dominant belief there and everybody must respect that dominant belief you know so you must tolerate the dominant belief of that area so there came the western civilization so you know when there's a conflict between two values you know that is a dominant, powerful value, and um, and, and, and minor one. Please. The minor one goes below, and the dominant comes above. So, like in Liberia, those are established Liberia were mostly Christians. Okay, so uh, they they penetrated the hinterland with their Christian values. You know, and they told the uh, the those that they met in the hinterland that what worshiping rivers, worshiping this, you know, it's not good. There is. There is there's one God, let's worship that one God. Okay. As a result of that, you know, some of the they took some of the children of those traditional people, those tribes. They brought them home and they educated them and their children went by and you know and inculcated what they learned in their parents. You know, so um, the traditional beliefs started, you know, um, fading uh, gradually, you know, to an extent where today um, we are still Hello, yeah. We are still compiling um, uh, our tradition, our traditions, cult our cultural uh, 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 artifacts, and all these kind of things. Because to a large extent, there are many young people you ask today about their own traditional belief. They don't know, you know, uh, or maybe uh, customs, traditions. They don't know, you know, uh, their way of life. What were their way of life before? Before now, they only know the dominant way of life. They don't know the, their historical way of life. So, and that's a, that's a very serious problem for us, you know. So that is why we made reference in our literature that there is a need to respect the rule of law. If we respect the rule of law, then we, uh, uh, for instance, like, I, I, I call the rule of law because it made reference to uh, some people worship bird, you know, some people say you don't care bird, you don't care this. But supposing I'm in a, the, the, law, the Republic, the laws of Liberia uh, does not say, uh, bar me from or preclude me from killing bird. And I go in a community, you know, and I see the bird that I kill. So is that wrong? And, you know, so that there's a conflict now between laws and religion, you know, and, and culture. So um, the, the preeminent law of that country must be the constitution of that country. So the rule of law is preeminent. So, but would you agree with those who hold the view that mm -hmm. the history of Christianity mm -hmm. in Liberia, mm -hmm. in Africa, and the history of Islam mm -hmm. in Liberia and in Africa generally has been one of conquest and domination? And subjugation of uh, indigenous peoples. Well, history, history. I mean, if you read a lot of uh, books on history, they say that that Islam came and you know conquered, conquered the people, and you know, and and imposed their their religious belief on the and people. And so the Christianity. Yeah, so it? Christianity. So uh, yeah, because you see, people people are immersed. People are um, um, adamant to their belief, they hold, they hold their belief very secretly, you know. So if you come and tell someone to to leave their belief and take yours, you know, it becomes a conflict, you know. And some conflict will ensue. At the end of the day, although maybe the Christian and the Muslim were dominant forces and they succeeded at the end of the day, but people will not take it on silver platter. There must be conflict. So no conflict, you know, uh, happened. But yeah, there, there were conflict, there were war that they fought. You know, so history is replete with those examples. Now, would you agree yeah. that that there is an attempt, official or unofficial, to
to institutionalize the two religions as state religions in Liberia? Well, I, I, I don't see any attempt to that effect, but, but I know that there are, there, are, there are two dominant religions in the proper Liberia. If you went to a public yeah. program, for example. Yeah, there, there, is a dom, there, is a dom, there are two dominant values in the country. Uh, the two dominant values, if you, if you cut the population of the Republic of Liberia, the majority of people fit in those, even the traditional believer. So even it's difficult to, to identify who is actually a traditional believer in Liberia, is it, as you might make reference to. So you either be a Muslim or Christian, or a sympathizer of Muslim or sympathizer of Christian. So these, these are these are the group. So there are two dominant forces in Liberia. So but, it, yeah. If, if you uh, recall the uh, the points made by my colleague uh, Commissioner Coleman, yeah, was that people say, well, you know. Uh, they were believers in traditional religion now they the whole believes in uh christianity some all believes in islam yeah. but when they go 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 and things get when they go and get stuff they go back to the beliefs to me it's suggestive of the fact that mm -hmm. traditional religion mm -hmm. has been more accommodating to the intrusions of uh western religion including uh islam as well you come but intrinsically our intrinsic values we do not abandon like for instance if there's something that's going on in a village we want to go and that we do not understand we want to go to who you will call a seer for example mm. to, 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 to consult the oracle you have a situation where and this manifests itself even in contemporary situations where talking about the rule of law in uh, and this conflict has come about where even uh, in uh, in Maryland, for example, there was white reports in the newspapers where people had been where ritual murders have been committed yeah. in Maryland, and in the absence of the rule of law, strong presence of the rule of law, mm -hmm. where individuals can be tracked down, individuals who commit crimes can be tracked down and be brought to justice. And people were insisting, the communities were insisting that there were instances before where through consultations with the oracles mm -hmm. and diviners, they were able to pinpoint those who had been committing ritual murders. While the police were coming in, not paying any attention to, or not taking into concern, not taking into regards their own traditions and all of that were not apprehending those who were committing ritual murders in you know in the country and that kind of thing so what i'm saying is that there has been more or less what you call this onslaught against uh you know uh traditional religion well, uh, I mean, for, let, let's look at, you know, we are a member of Committee of Nations, you know, and if you look in the world today, there are two most powerful religions, you know, you have Christianity and uh, you have Islam, okay? And uh, as I can tell you that um, there has been no assault against, you know, traditional uh, belief in Liberia, as my brother just made reference. Because first of all, the, the chiefs and elders, you know, are being respected. They are called to meetings, you know. And even the, the, when there when are conflicts, people, the chiefs and elders are called, you know, to, to, to help to resolve the conflicts. So there has been no assault on that, you know. But they just, there has been some dilution in the traditional beliefs of people in this country because of the emergence of two powerful world religions. You know, so uh, on all conditions, you, you, would, you would not practice those traditional beliefs to the fullest. You know, uh, I don't want to go deep into the traditional uh, belief of some people, you know, traditional religion of some people who used to, uh, some tribes in Liberia who used to uh, 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 eat their, their chiefs. And, you know, when you reach a certain age, uh, when you age to a certain, certain level and, you know, they said, oh, it's not good for the, the chief to die. So they kill the chief and they eat the chief and a new person come up. So these are, these are traditions that were practiced, that culture, custom that were practiced in Liberia. We don't want to go deep into the history of that, and, you know. But I can tell you that some of those beliefs, you know, people saw reason to live in them, and, you know, for a more, you know, um, a refined belief. We're not saying that all of the traditions and cultures, you know, uh, practices of the, of the people were wrong. But some of them, people saw reason when they told them, they said, look, 
these are not good and people saw the reasons no i think we have to do it this is not correct it, it was handed down to us by our our great grandparents so as i said culture is acquired so they acquire it but somebody didn't understand it and you know but they just practice it they were repressed they practice it and you know because they were handed down to them by their grandfather great grandfather you know and then later on they saw reason and they left it so there has been no assault at any time on the traditional people of, of this country because the traditional people are, all, are called to meetings they are called to resolve conflict and they have their ceremonies at all times in Liberia. so there's no assault